Perfect. So hello, everyone. Welcome to the Spring 2021 Virtual Educator Externship hosted by Elevate Ed AZ, the Center for the Future of Arizona, Arizona Business and Education Coalition, and the Pima County Superintendent's Office. As a reminder, we ask that you please keep your cameras on for the duration of the session and ensure your microphone is on mute if you are not speaking. Today, we are so excited to be joined by Kelly, Sam, and Tammy from Zovio, who will be discussing career pathways and education pathways within their company. So I will go ahead and turn it over to you. Fantastic, thank you. I appreciate the introduction and I'm you know, very, very excited and thrilled to be here. Um, I wanna start off by saying what an honor privilege it is to be sharing information you know, with a group of people who, in my opinion, are, are in one of the most noble and influential pr professions in the world. And I really mean that. I mean, every day you help shape, mold, encourage, influence, and guide future leaders, innovators, innovators, you know, workers within our, our country and our economy. Um, and I have a soft spot in my heart for teachers because my wife is a high school teacher. <laughs> so my wife teaches high school English. Um, my sister-in-law is a retired teacher, and I have two nieces who are who are school school teachers. So again, again, when I was given the opportunity to present, I was, I was very, very excited. And, and I do wanna share also that I owe where I am today in large part to the many educators who taught me, encouraged me, inspired me in so many ways. I mean, having been raised by a single mother you know, who grew up in a migrant worker family from Mexico, I know how impactful role models like all of you can be you know, to a young student. And I, I, you know, I, I owe a lot to where I am today to uh, people like you, so thank you. Um, <clears throat> so I wanna start off by going over our company, a little bit about our organization and explaining who we are. And then, you know, Kelly will speak in a little bit to talk about the, the partnerships that we have with, with organizations and companies. And, and then Tammy Alameda um, is, is a guest and she was um, gracious enough to join us and she is one of those partners that we'll be talking about. So next slide, Kelly. All right, our vision for Zovio is to be a leading education technology services company that partners with higher education institutions. Uh, so we have lots of partners um, and our, we, we partner with employers as well to deliver innovative personalized solutions to help learners and leaders achieve their aspirations. Bottom line is we partner with organizations to really provide pathways is really what we do. Next slide. So we, we do have um, entities within our organization, uh, Full Stack and Tutorby, but our, our primary client is the University of Arizona Global Campus. I noticed there are quite a few people from Southern Arizona. <clears throat> Good to see that representation here. So uh, uh, University of Arizona Global Campus is our largest partner. Uh, the mission of UAGC is to provide, of course, high quality, accessible, affordable, innovative educational programs that meet the diverse needs of individuals pursuing advancement in their lives, professions, and communities. Um, full Stack, we're, we're very excited to have Full Stack um, as part of our organization. Uh, full Stack Academy, um, they provide award-winning immersive coding boot camps. Uh, so basically coding, um, uh, other web development programs, um, cybersecurity. I mean, such a huge demand right now. And Full Stack is part of our organization. And then Tutorme. Uh, tutoring, Tutorme provides 24 seven tutoring services. Um, they match students up online with tutors, kind of like um, Uber um, for, for tutoring. So on-demand tutoring is basically what it is. And they, they, they connect students with uh, subject matter experts 24 seven. So we're very happy to have Tutorme um, as part of our organization as well. All right, next slide. Who do we serve? So we represent, uh, Kelly and I, uh, a division within Zovio called Employer Services. Uh, so we serve many, many partners. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, within our, our scope of who we serve, uh, within TutorMe, we serve 225 academic partners. Within Full Stack, we have 12 university partners and 430 direct organizational partnerships within Full Stack Academy, all nationwide. Uh, within our department, we work directly with 271 partners that offer a program called Full Tuition Grant, and Kelly is going to describe that in more detail here in a bit. And then we also have over 1,500 partners that offer another program, very popular program within our organization 
called Tuition Benefit Program. And this one in particular, the Tuition Benefit Program or the TB program, in many cases, those benefits are extended to family members. So all of this to say uh, that basically companies, many organizations and companies out there offer benefits related to educational advancement through tuition assistance or tuition reimbursement. So that's really the key takeaway from today is that make sure that your students know that wherever they end up after high school, many, many employers will offer benefits that can help them continue their, their advancement of their education. All right, next slide. <clears throat> so what do we do? So again, as I mentioned, we partner with organizations and corporations all over the country. Um, and we offer these tuition benefit programs. And really what we do is we create a pathway for working professionals to pursue a world-class education and have top tier and have a top tier student experience. We, the, our division, um, or I'm, I should say our, our campus, UAGC, um, offers 100% online instruction. So we're not necessarily geared toward the traditional student. Uh, U of A is geared toward the traditional student and U of A online, we're geared more toward the working professional. Our programs are five weeks long, generally speaking. Students can enter into a, a uh, course uh, basically 50 weeks per year. Every week is, is a potential starting point. So we offer a lot of flexibility. So in five weeks, they can complete a course that would typically take a semester at a traditional school like U of A, for example. So we're definitely geared toward the working professional. Next slide, Kelly. And Kelly's gonna talk about the, the actual programs that we offer in partnership with many of our, our um, organizations and, and corporations. Um, you're on mute. Um, can you unmute? There, there we go. go, sorry about that. Um, well, thank you so much. And um, I wanna thank Sam and Jennifer Lev Bruce for inviting me to be a part of today's presentation. Um, always a privilege when my boss's boss asked me to, my boss's boss's boss asked me to <laughs> <laughs> take part in a special project with him. Um, so this is great. And um, though I have to say a little intimidating preparing for this um, over the last couple of weeks as I started thinking about uh, presenting to you know, a meeting full of educators. Um, and uh, my high school, I started, so it, it took me back a minute because you know, as I'm starting to think about my audience and all of you being teachers in the K through 12, um, you know, college space, teaching young people, it took me back to my time as being one of those young people. And mm -hmm. uh, I have to say my teachers, my high school teachers would be so proud right now to know that um, here I am today. Uh, having this conversation with you all. So thank you again for, for mm -hmm. all that you do. Uh, it's important work and, and really, um, you know, it, it dawned on me too today, just what we have in common, um, all of us on this call is that passion to really help others achieve their aspirations in life. That's what I love about my job. And um, though most of the individuals that I'm working with on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis um, are uh, business leaders um, like Tammy, you know, in, a, in the HR field, um, developing the talent across their company, uh, as well as employees that are at all stages of life in their career. Um, there are so many of, of, of us that are out there, um, you know, still um, working towards that end goal in our life and working towards those aspirations. So um, a few of the program, the uh, pro products that um, we do extend, and this is through our fantastic relationship with the University of Arizona Global Campus, are these unique tuition assistance programs. Um, and I'll walk through them quickly here so you have a better understanding of, of what they are. And then we'll talk a little bit more on a couple other slides um, on how students um, that are graduating from high school might be able to take advantage of these programs themselves to, um, you know, pay for college. So the first one is the first, uh, the full tuition grant. And this is a program um, for employers that offer $5,250 in tuition assistance. And um, by tuition assistance, um, the definition of that, just in case there's anyone that on the line that doesn't quite know what that is, 
it's essentially a benefit that uh, organizations offer um, to help pay for education. And um, you know, companies offer tuition assistance in, in all range levels. And we'll talk a little bit about that more in a second. Um, but for those that do offer 5250, we seek to partner with those types of employers um, so that they can take advantage of the full tuition grant through the University of Arizona Global Campus. And that allows those employees to obtain their degree um, with zero out-of-pocket cost. It is, it is truly a completely debt-free education for those employees. Uh, it does cover all of their, their course materials fees all the way through graduation. It's a fantastic program and we have thousands of students that are taking advantage of that um, through companies across the U.S. The Shared Tuition Savings Program is a benefit that uh, is offered to employers that don't quite have that 5250 in a tuition assistance benefit to offer. Um, so the minimum here is 3000. So any employer that may have a tuition assistance benefit with $3,000 or more um, can take advantage of this. Um, how this works is the employee would then be responsible for only contributing $6,500 towards their undergrad and $7,500 towards a graduate program. And that can be financed through financial aid, which you know, we, can, we can provide that assistance at UAGC um, or whatever other means is affordable to them. But it does um, provide a significant savings still to the uh, employee taking advantage of that. And then the third and final benefit here is our tuition benefit. Um, this is essentially a discount off of the tuition at University of Arizona Global Campus. Um, and that discount um, also can cover, uh, you know, materials, course materials, other fees and so on. And then as Sam mentioned, um, what's also great about this is um, we typically uh, work with all of our partners to ensure that this is also leveraged for family members. So you may have, um, you know, so someone who is, is working for a company and has this benefit available may not be interested in another degree themselves, um, but have an or a spouse that from this. Next slide here. Okay, so um, I am not sure if this slide is, or if you're seeing what I'm seeing, it looks a little uh, wide, but um, apologize if it's not. So this is my wild card. Um, and it's my wild card slide because that is just uh, my personality. I'm the squiggly line on the right hand side. <laughs> and uh, so it just wouldn't be me to have a just straight narrow presentation. Um, I, I really wanted to, uh, like I, I said, as I was preparing for this presentation today, you know, re really took me back to um, thinking about myself as a high school student. Um, went from high school, I'll, I'll share just a little bit about my high school journey or education journey. I graduated from high school. I was a, a CB student and it was always a struggle. Academic wasn't easy for me, um, but you know, I was always pushing myself to do my best um, while managing a, a very active social life and sports and, and everything else that came with that in high school. Um, I went on to the College of Charleston. I'm from South Carolina. So I went on to the College of Charleston, um, had a very fun first semester, and uh, that um, didn't need to proceed to the second semester. So from, from there, I went to community college. I went back home and went to community college um, where I, I learned the hard way pay my way through school from that point forward. So I had one shot to make it work and I messed up on that. So um, from that point forward, it was up to me to achieve my education all on my own. Um, and with a, a couple of loop-de-loops on that squiggly line, I made it work. But um, I pulled this slide actually from something that I found online um, by a woman named Dr. Madeline Levine. Some of you have may, may have heard of her as, as you're all educators. Uh, she's a psychologist, an educator herself, um, and a uh, New York Times bestseller. She's written a couple of books, um, 
that you might be interested in. One is called The Price of Privilege. Uh, Teach Your Children Well was another one. And, um, and then her latest book out is called Ready or Not. This just came out this year. And um, that book is focused on how to best prepare our children uh, and ourselves, um, you know, as we continue to evolve in an uncertain and just, you know, rapidly changing world that we're all going through. And with three children of my own who also have, you know, all three very unique learning abilities um, and aspirations of their own, um, you know, I can really personally attest to the lessons in some of her books and, and her teachings. Um, and I'm sure that you all can find those useful for the students that you're working with. But um, back to the squiggly and straight line. So Dr. Levine, a few years ago, she conducted this study in which she had asked um, 100,000 people from all walks of life who considered themselves successful if they achieved that success by following a straight path or a squiggly path. And she found that the proportion of the straight line people made up uh, only 10%, or sorry, she found that the proportion of the straight line people um, were just the 10% of that 100,000, while the 90% of those 100,000 folks um, you know, considered their path to success via that squiggly line. And the definition of that squiggly line are those who have taken risks, failed, changed course, recovered, often failed again, but ultimately found their stride. And like I said, I'm the squiggly line, maybe some of you are the squiggly line. Uh, but as I think about your students and the work that you're doing and, and you know what you're hoping to achieve maybe from this webinar and everything else you've learned this week is that you know your kids today, you know they've gone from one grade to another, accelerating, really kind of following that straight line, um, you know, for the most part to, to get to high school graduation. But what happens from here? And that's where things get really scary. You know, how do they, uh, it, you know, what, what is their aspiration? How do they make a life of their own as an adult? And, and how in the world are they going to do that um, by affording a college education? Well, we are um, gonna talk to you in the next couple of slides about some of the ways that they uh, uh, can do that um, in a non-traditional way. Because there certainly are options for for kids today to um, you know, achieve those aspirations in life and afford college. So I introduced on a couple of slides ago, the term tuition assistance, and I'll, I'll go back and talk a little bit more about what this is and, and why employers are offering tuition assistance. In my role as account executive here at Zovio, I spend um, most of my time working, like I said, with, with employers, um, folks like Tammy, who I'm really excited um, to introduce here in just a second. Um, and you know, my, my primary job um, is helping my clients, helping these companies leverage that tuition assistance program um, that they offer to help improve their and develop their talent pool and um, help those companies uh, you know, achieve the recognition that they're all striving to be known as, as a, the best place to work um, so that they can attract great talent and be productive and, and do what um, you know, their, their mission is, is to do. Tuition and benefit, um, yeah, like I said earlier, it um, can be a range of dollars that employers are offering. And one of the reasons, um, well, there's, you know, there's quite a few listed here, you know, some of the reasons why employers offer tuition assistance is it does help them upskill and develop their employees. So by creating partnerships with organizations like ours, they're able to leverage our University of Arizona Global Campus uh, degree programs, as well as those great discounts, you know, that I just went over including our full stack and um, tutor me programs. Um, and then of course, you know, there, there's plenty of other organizations out there like ours and other universities that, that may offer something similar, but um, it, um, 
really helps these employers upskill and develop them in this, the skills that they need um, to help with their succession planning and um, productivity as an organization. Tuition assistance is also a, a strategic tool that can be used for retention. Um, so when an employee is taking advantage of this program and they're earning their degree, um, you know, chances are they're going to stay there until they complete that degree. And that could be, you know, a year, several years. Um, but then once they have that degree, that gives them the chance to grow within the company, um, advance their career. These tuition assistance is also leveraged um, by employers today as, as a strategic way for engaging their employees. Um, again, when you have a community of employees, maybe in a department, um, that are all going to the same school to working towards a degree, it, um, you know, it just, it creates a community and, and they support each other and, and their managers are supporting them. Um, and we've recently seen even that um, um, tuition assistance is starting to show some strategic measures for diversity and inclusion, you know, providing that, you know, uh, opportunity, equitable opportunity for education is is what employers are are able to take part in now so mm -hmm. really exciting and it's such an important program that um, employers are a part of uh, and just super thrilled that uh, Tammy in just a moment give me a couple more slides um, is going to talk a little bit more about that from her perspective so um, in this particular slide um, I wanted to share with you just as an example Zovio is uh, a great company in, you know, headquartered there in Chandler, Arizona, that offers this benefit. And I can attest, um, I'm actually able to take advantage of that myself. I completed my, finally completed my degree after six years um, at the University of South Carolina. But that was, that was a while ago. That was about 25 years ago. And, uh, um, you know, there was always a dream to go back and complete my a graduate level degree. I really was interested in, in earning an MBA, um, but but cost was always a factor. And um, uh, fortunately, having this benefit available to me has allowed me to uh, do that. And then, um, like I said, you know, Zovio, we offer this not only to our employees, but we also extend the tuition benefit to family members. So you know, the benefits of, of a degree, um, you know, we, we don't need to even ask that question. Everyone on here understands what that is. But, but the question is, you know, how does this information that we've started to share with you today, um, how can you take this information to help your students and help them understand that there are other ways to obtain an affordable college education after high school? So I want to um, let Tammy talk here um, for a minute about what Brightview uh, is doing as a great example. Um, Brightview is one of our corporate partners um, and, and a few others that um, you know, we work with. We work with many, as Sam mentioned earlier, like Kroger, Walgreens, Pepsi, McDonald's, Banner Health, T-Mobile, and Cox Communications. And I wanted to, to be, you know, carefully share some of those names of companies because I'm sure you all recognize them. And those are common companies that young people in high school and right out of high school uh, may typically go to work for. And these are all companies that are offering tuition assistance programs. So, you know, I ask that you and um, you know, share this message with your students uh, that they should be asking these employers are working for if there's a opportunity for them to take advantage of these benefits uh, so that they can um, leverage that for their education after high school. And Tammy, um, thank you again for joining us. Tammy has been um, a client of mine now for um, quite some time and Brightview does great work. And uh, I think it's, it's great, Tammy, that you can be here and share your perspective as an employer uh, and, and someone in HR that is grooming and hiring talent. Um, 
what do these education programs mean to your business and to the employees that you work with? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, just in case you don't know, Brightview, Brightview Landscape um, is a nationwide company. We have about 25,000 team members nationwide. Um, so we are a large company, a uh, public company at that. Um, when I think of when it, when it comes to achieving a degree, um, we hope that nothing should stand in the way between our team members and their dreams, especially not a price tag. And that's why we have partnered with UAGC um, to, so that we can provide to our team members, our Brightview team members, tuition benefit and savings on education related fees, et cetera. This exciting partnership um, that we have with UAGC provides an affordable opportunity uh, for our team members to pursue either master's or bachelor's degree, potentially at no cost. So we wanna to try to get rid of that price tag um, issues as much as college has gone up. And most importantly, it provides an important stepping stone to our team members towards achieving either that new position or promotion, or most importantly, just additional educational development or, or desire to continue to learn or, or to start you know, back in uh, to achieve their bachelor's degrees. Um, so our team members, the partnership, they can either uh, gain a full tuition grant um, or potentially the, the other program provides a 40% discount. Um, and the other very exciting thing is that it's not just limited to our team members. Um, we, uh, the 40% discount can also go to a team member's immediate family member, spouse, domestic partner, or children. So I really love that the UAGC partnership really gives our team members a pathway to explore educational discipline that they can be interested in, or even just to pursue additional knowledge, whether it helps their career or not, just that desire to continue to learn. The partnership's fantastic. We have numerous team members enrolled. And oftentimes they're adults that they have children, you know, adult children themselves, and they just never were able to afford college and now they can. So whether it's for themselves, I actually have a team member who's in the program and their child's in the program. So it's pretty cool that they're both in the program. So great par partnership. Thank you. Excellent. Um, Kelly, did you want to speak? Uh, to yes, sorry. And this was this slide um, just oh, sorry. To, oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead, Tammy. Oh, sorry, I didn't, I forgot there was another slide. Yes, great because numerous career paths. So for um, our, our educators on the phone, you were from high school. So certainly um, we've got numerous, once they're age 18, they can join on um, and be eligible for um, either for, for this program. Um, and so we've got various business lines, whether it's design, construction, landscape maintenance, water management, golf, tree care, you name it, leadership, et cetera. Uh, once they're in college, we have a very nice internship program that uh, our goal is to bring on a college uh, student. And then uh, they usually continue to come back and they're, they're looking towards a leadership role. Um, and then we're typically, we have numerous interns that once they graduate from college, we hire them on as a full-time in leadership. Lots of opportunities at Brightview. Absolutely. And, um, you know, something else for all of you educators to think about um, as, as just another you know, message to, to share with your students is your, your students may have parents that are working with employers who offer tuition assistance. So, you know, I would have never known to ask this as a, as a, as a young kid, um, and my, my kids would have never thought to ask it either, but, um, you know, they, they should be asking their, their parents, does your employer, you know, mom or dad, tuition assistance or scholarships um, that could be made available. So, um, you know, we hope you have, have learned today that um, there are some unique options out there you know, more, more ways than one to, to find money and find opportunities to not only help pay for college, but to start gaining that training and that professional development um, experience as, as, a, as, as, as young as 18, um, you know, while they're in high school, developing those technical and soft skills that I think you all have been talking about throughout the week. Um, 
And one of the things I saw from your uh, presentation, oh, your opening presentation on Monday as part of this conference was um, interesting facts about the skill gaps and job, uh, job opportunities in the state of Arizona. And uh, I recall that one of the, um, one of the, the greatest um, sort of job opportunities right now, um, but skills gap is, or, or talent gap is in the construction uh, management sector. And Brightview is a great example of a company that um, you know, has these great career paths in construction management, landscaping, agriculture, um, some of those that the state of Arizona is looking for, for good talent. Um, so uh, perhaps you have some students that might be interested in checking Brightview out. I think that takes us to our last slide, Sam. I'll pan it yeah, you bet. Um, thank you, thank you, Tammy, appreciate that. And I think the, the, the secret or the, the, the key takeaway here is to encourage your students to get their foot in the door. If a traditional pathway isn't what they're interested in, you know, at this age, you know, there are other ways that they can, you know, uh, basically take advantage of these types of opportunities. And, and then if you think about it, think back like uh, the, uh, how far we've come, you know, within our economy when it comes to advancements. And, and you know, 20 years ago, who would have imagined that cell phones would become smartphones and there were, you know, smartphones would be so prevalent and that we would have 5G technology. I never could have imagined that. You know, think about 15 years ago, who knew we would have autonomous vehicles? And, and, and as a result of that, a new emerging industry would be formed. You know, uh, think about 10 years ago, who knew we would have so many data security breaches in our country and cybersecurity would be one of the most in-demand career fields. I mean, the, you know, all of these companies that we're you know, referencing all have a need and they need people and people are what forms the backbone of any organization. And when you get your foot in the door, these companies will support their employees, you know, to, to advance within the company, you know, to upskill, you know, and, and, and to be essentially in a position to lead that organization. So lots of opportunities with these partnerships. Um, but, in, but in closing, we'll, have an, we'll open it up to questions here in a second, but there are a lot of affordable ways uh, to obtain a high quality education and again, I love this. Learning is lifelong; it never ends. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> I get that, but we, you know, it's 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 something that you know has impacted me personally, and I'm sure it has impacted everybody on this call. Learning is lifelong, and we're all in this together. So, um, any questions? More than happy to answer questions that you may have, and any comments. And I see a few have been. Um popping up in the in the, the chat. Thank you, Tammy, for responding to, to some of those. The last one here is also to you. Uh, <laughs> what skills are most important to you in hiring young people into entry-level roles? Great question. Oh, <laughs> you asked me, sorry. I was, I was typing away. Um, you know, when I think of, let's just take a, a, a student graduating from high school as long as they're 18, um, it's really, they don't have to have experience. As somebody coming, and they've got the drive to want to learn, to want to work, and they have the ability to get along with the team because you work, you don't work alone. You work with a, a crew, we call it a crew, a team of potentially two to five on any one property, depending on the property and landscape maintenance I'm speaking about. Um, so it's just the ability to, you know, they service clients, they care about quality, um, and they, they have this desire to work. It, it's, it's hard work. I mean, especially in, in landscaping, as you know, you're outdoors. So you work in the elements, right? Especially Arizona. I've been there before. <laughs> it's hot in the summer. Um, and so working uh, outdoors and they have a love for uh, nature, being outdoors and servicing clients and working with team members. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks. <clears throat> Cindy, you, you um, posted a question. Um, as far as skills and qualities that are important to Zovia, we have uh, various uh, departments, um, you know, service areas within our organization. Again, we're an ed tech services company. So we have everything from uh, marketing, um, we have uh, student services, basically individuals that, that meet with students and provide them guidance. Uh, we have an enrollment team. Um, that's probably our biggest department within the, the um, organization. 
uh, that services anybody who inquires and helps them through the enrollment process. You know, we have financial services. Uh, we have a team that's called the Student Resource Center, which tends to be more of the entry level part of our organization, but the Student Resource Center basically works with anybody who inquires and qualifies them and makes sure, makes sure they're a good fit and, and transfers them to the enrollment team. Um, and then of course, there's all sorts of support. There's, there's technology support, um, there's HR support, um, and I'm probably missing several <laughs> functional areas within our organization, but, but the skills and qualities are really, you know, first of all, many positions do require some uh, experience, but really just people who have a desire to make a difference in students' lives. You know, it's people who are passionate. And, and again, to Tammy's point, people who are team oriented because every group within our organization, you know, functions within a team. Um, so having that, you know, that mindset of working within a team is important. Um, so I hope, I hope that answers some of your questions, um, Cindy. Sam, there's another one. I'll, I'll, I'll speak it out if you want yeah, to please, speak please to this. Do. This one, what advice would you give to a student who is researching careers? Are there certain things that they should be looking for when selecting their pathway or even the organization they want to work for aside from the wonderful benefit of tuition assistance? Or Tammy, either one of you want to, any, either one of you want to speak to that? Go ahead. I, I can speak to it from yeah. a, as a parent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm not a certified counselor. Um, you know, nor nor am I in in HR working with with young people as they're starting their career. But um, I, so I, I'm sure all of us um, and, and any of you that are that are on the call today, if you have children um, in high school or or beyond or or younger, right? It's it's just it's an ongoing problem. Um, in terms of you know helping them select their their pathway, for me, I I feel as though the advice that I've given my kids is to be okay that it doesn't have to be a straight line. And I think that's why that slide really really hit home for me um, for this presentation. I've been going through this conversation with my kids um, over the last couple of years. Um, I have one son who just graduated from high school last year. And uh, he actually um, was enrolled to, to start our local junior college here. Um, but I could tell he was so nervous. He was just not ready um, to, 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 to take that next step for many reasons. Number one, it's still online, um, you know, being able to, to take that step here. But um, he's, he also enjoys working with his hands. He likes productivity and he likes to work and um, he's interested, you know, he, he wants to be outdoors. Um, so part of it is just giving him the, you know, empowerment to not feel like he has to follow the same line that many of his other friends might be um, going about. So he's in plumbing, he's trying out plumbing for now. And uh, I have, my, my daughter is 20 years old. Um, and she's changed her major twice um, now that she's a sophomore in college. And you know, she's also just trying to, to figure out her way. And my advice is intern, volunteer. Volunteering is such a great way to familiarize yourself with um, different people, different types of jobs, um, you know, different sectors, um, different skills and obtain those, those, attain those skills. So um, I really encourage young people to get out and volunteer as much as they can. That's a great way to, to learn and figure out your way. Yeah. And, and I, if I can piggyback on that, Kelly, trade and vocational careers are so important within our economy. Um, and, and, and again, it's a great way to get your foot in the door if your students don't have that aspiration to start right off in a traditional um, direction. Um, but think about it, every organization that offers those uh, career path or those job opportunities, they need managers, they need leaders. And once they have their, once they get their foot in the door, if they're in an organization that provides that support, you know, they, then they can decide what makes sense for them. And then they can pursue whatever, you know, training they're going to pursue, you know, leadership training, you know, we offer non-degree 
uh, programs as well that are short term, that are more concentrated. That's another pathway they can choose. But there's a lot out there for, for students that are researching careers. Good. I have a question. Sam? Yes. Um, you, you said a non-degree program. It, would that be part of the, the, the program of either the tuition grant or the 40% off? Is that separate? Or? In, in most cases, companies do provide um, um, tuition assistance to cover non-degree as well. Every, every okay. company is a little different. And then these, these are basically short-term one to three course programs that we've offered in the past that we can offer to any company that's interested. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm right. interested Kelly, for some of our leaders. Talk to Tammy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we got to have another call. <laughs> exactly. That's great. And those uh, non-degree programs are a great way to just get your feet wet. Decide yep. if, if uh, you know, a, a, a course in finance, you might, you might really enjoy math uh, yeah. or information, you know, technology. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a great way just to get your feet wet and decide if, if, if you enjoy the, mm -hmm. the content enough to continue pursuing it towards a full degree. Very good. Great. Any, Any other questions? questions? I'll jump in because someone direct messaged me a question. Um, Samson, how would you help students debating over online education versus in-person education? Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that? It's an interesting question. That is an interesting question. You know, I'll, I'll put my enrollment hat on since I was an enrollment advisor for many years. <clears throat> you know, it really depends on, you know, what, what the best fit is. For most working professionals, online is the only option. You know, it gives them the flexibility to, you know, um, log into their classroom at a time that's the most convenient, especially if they have children and they work full time, which most of our students do. Um, and for, um, more, you know, for, for the older uh, student, older being, you know, um, 25 plus, you know, that, that's just the better path. And um, it, it just it really fits nicely into their, um, their personal lifestyle. For the traditional student, you know, the 18 year old, maybe not so much, you know, it's, it's different. So at the end of the day, they're, they're achieving the same learning objectives. You know, the quality of the education is the same. The instructors are the same. They're all, they all meet the same qualifications. Um, so, and the degree never distinguishes between a campus program or an online program. So they, they achieve the same educational outcome uh, that a campus student would achieve. So really it's, it's a personal choice. Um, I have my oldest son, um, who's 29, uh, started out at a traditional school, kind of like Kelly's um, uh, example. And, you know, the traditional school didn't work for him. After a semester and a half, he, he wasn't happy. He wasn't doing well. He started working full time and then he realized, you know what, I need my education, I need my degree. He went back and he's taken every class since then, 100% online. And since he came back to school, he has aced every class. So he's getting a 4.0 GPA right now. And he was nowhere near a 4.0 GPA <laughs> out of high school. He was actually doing some classes. So again, everybody's different and he's super excited. He's getting ready to transfer uh, to the, to the uh, local four-year university to finish a degree in accounting. So you never know, right? That squiggly line. Yeah. And, you know, my daughter, um, my oldest daughter, she's, she's 20 years old. She's, she, after high school, she went straight to San Francisco State University <clears throat> on a partial volleyball uh, scholarship. And, um, and then COVID happened. And she moved mm -hmm. home and continued out her semester last, last year this time. Uh, online, and um, you know, by by the time fall semester was starting, uh, we had the discussion about why not just transfer to UAGC. Um, volleyball wasn't an option anymore, so she's also um, where she and I are a mother daughter team going to school together online at UAGC, and mm -hmm. she loves it. Um, the The format with UAGC is unique, um, and not all online schools follow the same format that we offer, um, our, our format is asynchronous. So our students um, are primarily working adults and we truly have, um, it, the, 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 the format allows students to uh, complete their coursework 
on your own schedule. So you can work a full schedule, uh, you know, a full work day, a full work week, and complete those courses at night. Um, that's, that's my schedule um, in my MBA, where my daughter is nannying part-time and, and hostessing part-time. So she gets her schoolwork done when she can. And, and she loves it. And so many of our, our young kids today um, are very comfortable doing everything online. So um, it's not a stretch for them to, to go to school, I think, online. But as Sam mentioned, it's, there's certainly benefits um, for you know, folks to, to, to go to a traditional campus and, and have that social environment too. So it's really up to the student. Yeah. Any other questions? I'd love to hear like how, how are, are there any certain challenges that you're feeling as educators um, um, that you are encountering and, and helping your students with that sort of next step towards college? What are, what are those common challenges? I think what you said and you were talking about your own, oh, sorry, hi. Um, the challenge I think at, as a high school counselor is that kids are expected to go to college, right? Like that's the thing that they've been told. And a lot of them are like, I don't really want to go to college or I do want to go to college. I just don't know what I want to go to college for. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's interesting talking to them about like other non-traditional careers. Mm -hmm. um, so you're right, like they don't have to figure out their lives at 18, but like as a high school counselor, I'm like, ah, but you kind of do, you kind of don't. Like, mm -hmm. And as a parent, I'm like, you kind of don't. So I think that's the biggest challenge. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting, right? As, as your role, Anna, um, you have that expectation in your job to make sure they're continuing their education, but um, you know, we all, that, that's, it, that, that's that's really I think what all of us as um, being educators one way or another um, in the, the the shape and form of work that we do um, want to encourage that lifelong learning um, that doesn't always have to be a tra the traditional route that that we we may have went. Yeah, so, some great comments for sure, um, <clears throat> when it comes to online and the fear of online. And, and again, because we were all forced, all of our students were forced because of the pandemic to go online, you know, it's, it's been a struggle for some, for many. Um, but, you know, now that so many more people have been exposed to it, you know, when the time is right, you know, at least now people know what to expect. And, you know, for the most part, you know, what the options are. So at some point, you know, they may feel more comfortable as they get older um, or as they become working professionals to embrace it. But, um, but yeah, it's definitely an option, but it's not for everyone, for sure. Well, and even though we do here at Zobio uh, and through the University of Arizona Global Campus, um, you know, really focus on technology and online um, uh, in, in, our, in our work, there are so many options out there. And I, I hope that um, you know, some of the message that we shared today is to mm -hmm. um, you know, help you all help your students and, and let them know that there are lots of other ways out there, companies that have education partnerships with traditional schools, they may be community colleges, um, but um, ask about those funding, you know, that those dollars that may be available, whether it's tuition assistance or scholarship money um, that can help them achieve that education as well as develop, you know, training and development programs. Um, encourage those, the, you know, your students to not just get a job, but to get a job and talk to their managers uh, about the training that um, can be offered to them. Mm -hmm. That's going to, to really help um, you know, then later in life is, is learning how to ask for those things. That's one of the things I, I try to hone in all the time with my kids is just teaching them how to ask. Mm -hmm. 
good advice. All right, well, well, thank you everyone. Appreciate your time, <clears throat> you know, for Friday afternoon, uh, Friday evening, it's been great. Um, what a great audience you've been and really appreciate your attention. Um, and thank you. Um, Cindy, is there anything else you'd like to share? Well, thank you very much. I have one kind of final question. <laughs> um, I, what I'm curious about, you know, you talked a little bit about our transition as a society to online work and school. So one thing I think could be interesting for educators to hear, our educators have seen and experienced the difficulties that some students, as well as their colleagues, but some students really experience transferring to an online environment. And you work a lot in the online environment. I'm curious about when, when more of your employees move to an online environment quickly without a lot of, of warning, or training. What are some of this? What are some of the things you saw those employees struggle with most? I'm curious if there are some of the same things our students struggled with. I'll let Sam or Tammy pick. Yeah, that. <clears throat> I mean, our, our employees went 100% online when when our our um, offices shut down. Uh, so everybody went to work from home um, format, and you know it was it was a challenge. I mean, first of all, getting the technology where it needed to be and, you know, getting, getting people to, you know, set up their, their office environments or wherever they're going to be working. Not everybody had access to an office. Um, so that was a bit of a struggle in some cases. Um, but no, there was a, a definite adjustment. Um, but now that people have adjusted, many people prefer to work from home or at least have a blended type of work situation where they can come in you know, two or three days a week and then work from home. So I think that's, that's what's come out of this for our company. A lot of people prefer to have that blended model. So, you know, that we may be considering that as an organization. That's interesting. Thank you for sharing that. I've heard that yeah. quite a bit. And I've also heard some um, in education, we're kind of all thinking about different types of models for, um, for delivery as well, and not mm -hmm. so much tied to seat time and Carnegie units. So thank you. Anyone else? And Casey, I, I asked a lot of questions there. Anything from your perspective um, uh, as a closing out too? Yeah, no, definitely. I was just going through the chat and we have, a, of, of course, a lot of great comments around this idea of online versus in-person, whether that's in a workplace or in education. Um, I want to make sure before we leave, I know someone had asked if there is a list either on your website or if you have any resources of companies that do take advantage um, of that tuition assistance. So that way the, the educators can share that with their students. Uh, we could look into that. Um, a lot of the partnerships are based on a uh, MOU, Memorandum of Understanding. Uh, so, you know, we're in many cases, we're not allowed to um, uh, divulge the partnerships, um, but there are definitely, there's information out there. I mean, if people do searches, um, there's definitely information um, Kelly, do you know anything about any any pot potential lists or sites where people can learn a little bit more? I'm not. Well, and yeah, so as Sam mentioned, we don't have uh, we don't publish a list ourselves mm -hmm. on our on our our website. Um, but there's a couple of ways you can search. I mean, anyone you can go to um, you know like a Glassdoor or LinkedIn or Indeed, um, the sort of common job sites, and plug in tuition benefit. Or, or I'm sorry, tuition assistance, um, and often you'll that will populate a, a list of employers that will to offer those programs. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's in the yeah. it's in the thousands. <laughs> Just think of I tell you what, it's a great idea to have a one place with that listed because it's a differentiator for companies that do offer that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, that's that's excellent advice, um, and I encourage everyone on the call maybe as a you know after afternoon activity to take a look and see what are some of those companies that do offer some of those tuition assistance and tuition benefits. So, um, with that, if there are no more questions, Sam, Kelly, Tammy, thank you so much for your time today. We really do appreciate you sharing your knowledge and expertise with everyone, um, and we yeah. look forward to con continuing to engage with everyone. So, um, with that, have an excellent weekend, and we'll talk to everyone soon. Thank you Thanks, so much. Everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> Bye -bye. Have a great weekend. Bye. Good luck.
Thank you, Jennifer. What a great team. Yes, thank you so much. It was, um, I thought they did great and a lot of really good questions. Mm -hmm. So thank you for um, allowing us the opportunity to share a little bit about what they do. And hopefully they were able to um, give some good tips to the mm -hmm. educators on how to uh, speak to the students and, and ask those good questions about opportunities for them to help pay for, for their education. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was great. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Well, thanks for letting us be a part of this. And hopefully everyone has a great um, long weekend and enjoy, uh, enjoy the nice weather too. <laughs> thanks. Yes, you too. Okay. All right. Take care. Have a bye great bye. weekend. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye, Cindy. I'll be sending you some emails. <laughs> As always. <laughs> right. As always. Right. What's new about that? Have a good weekend. Thanks. You too. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye.